Damn, guys! So today's movie I'm reviewing is an old school action thriller. It's Andrew Davis's The Fugitive. I got inspired to rewatch this film after I recently rewatched Captain America The First Avenger and I saw Tommy Lee Jones in that. And I have such a soft spot for Tommy Lee Jones. So I said to Glenn, we're gonna sit down and we're gonna watch his movie that he won his Best Supporting Actor Oscar for, The Fugitive. Thank God it was an action movie because Glenn has the attention span of a pot noodle. The Fugitive stars Harrison Ford as Dr. Richard Kimball, a respected vascular surgeon who is wrongfully convicted of murdering his wife and sentenced to death. However, after a transit bus crash, he manages to escape and then he goes on the run and he tries to prove his innocence. A gnarly but relentless marshal called Samuel Gerard, who's playing this film by Tommy Lee Jones, is called in to lead the manhunt and what follows is a suspenseful two hour cat and mouse chase thriller which, after nearly 30 years after its release, is still a lot of fun. The Fugitive is actually a movie adaptation of a TV series of the same name from the 1960s, and normally TV series which get a movie makeover don't always translate very well into the new medium. Some ideas are just better suited for TV. However, The Fugitive, while certainly being dated in a few aspects by today's standards, appears to be the exception to the rule. It blends great acting with a simple but thrilling premise, it's well paced, totally edited, every scene serves a purpose, it's stylish, and there's also a sense of intrigue and mystery as Kimball tries to prove his innocence. It's a gripping film because the two central characters, played by Harrison Ford and Tommy Lee Jones, are both portrayed superbly by the way, Harrison Ford and Tommy Jones are both fantastic here, but also they're two very likable, believable, and intelligent characters. This character pairing gives the fugitive an almost Hitchcockian atmosphere because you find yourself rooting for both of the characters and it's exhilarating to see how these two characters try and outmaneuver and outsmart each other. The script isn't particularly flashy, it actually feels quite grounded for an action movie. A lot of action movies tend to resort to epic moments of grandiose, quippy dialogue, but the fugitive, for the most, Resist this urge. There is one instance where it does feel a bit corny. I missed your stop. It's like that bit in Air Force One where Harrison Ford's like, get off my plane. Whoosh. Love it. But the most iconic and most quotable bit of dialogue from this movie actually feels quite organic. I didn't kill my wife. I don't care. I think the effectiveness of that dialogue is down to its simplicity and the fact that it gives you insight into this duo of characters. Kimball is desperate to prove his innocence and Gerard is simply a man doing his job. The characterization of Kimball and Gerard is fantastic. Harrison Ford deserves more credit for his portrayal of Dr. Richard Kimball. His reserved sense of stoicism really works well for this type of character. A lot of other actors would have been more melodramatic with this role, but he keeps it quite contained and it works very well. But it is fair to say that Tommy Lee Jones steals this movie the minute he shows up. He's magnetic without being showy. He's got a sense of humor, but he's determined to catch his target. And what probably won him the Oscar is the fact that he gets a lot of screen time. I mean, he is a supporting character in this film, but he almost feels like a co-lead. And this gave Tommy Lee Jones a lot of room to develop this character ever so gradually and subtly. At the start of this film, he's the guy that says he doesn't bargain, but as the pursuit escalates and he learns more about Kimball's murder case, and he starts to question whether Kimball actually did murder his wife, you can see how he starts questioning his ethos, how he wrestles with how he's gonna go about finding this man. You see the evolution of his character and it's very well done. I actually said to Glenn while we were watching The Fugitive that Tommy Lee Jones' performance as Gerard doesn't necessarily feel like a Best Supporting Actor Oscar winning performance playing a marshal in an action thriller chase movie. It's not necessarily an Academy movie, but what makes Tommy Lee Jones' performance so astounding is how grounded it feels. It almost feels like he's not even acting. That's how good he is, that's how convincing he is when you think, oh, he's not really putting any effort because he's just so convincing in this role. So I understand why he won the Oscar because his performance just feels authentic. What also makes The Fugitive so enjoyable upon rewatch is seeing how good Andrew Davis is at directing action scenes. The opening set piece with the bus slash train crash is heart pounding. You know it's a good action set piece when The Simpsons have done a parody of it. The practical effects of the crashing train are just immense. In these days, it's much easier and cheaper to do an action sequence like that with CGI. However, seeing a sequence like that, with so much of it done for real, is mind-blowing. It all flows so beautifully. Davis knows how to build action to a satisfying crescendo, none more so than the helicopter chase, which turns into the tunnel chase and then ends with the damn jump. Damn! Because that shot was awesome. <laughs> 
God, I'm so white. Eh? That's two times they parodied The Fugitive. My glasses! I also love the cinematography in that tunnel chase. It's very well lit. When it comes to negatives, The Fugitive's faults are mostly a circumstance of time. There are parts of it which look very dated now. For starters, the opening credits look like they were made on PowerPoint. I'm sure back in 1993, this looked really impressive, but by today's standards, it looks amateur. Also, the opening credits of this film go on for far too long. It's not until 15 minutes into the movie where it says, Directed by Andrew Davis. Wow, that's like one eighth of this movie. There's a few techniques which do feel a bit vintage as well, like during the flashbacks when they use the stark black and white contrast, as well as that repeated audio thing to emphasize really important lines. Oh, wait up. It does feel a little bit cheesy. The sound mixing is a bit patchy in places, like the helicopter chase scene, which is exhilarating, but you can barely hear what Tommy Lee Jones is saying half the time. And even the score by James Newton Howard, which I will say I love, I think it's great, but it definitely feels like a product of the 90s. It's not necessarily a bad thing. I think Newton Howard's score is great. It's urgent and thrilling. It gives you that feeling of high stakes. So yeah, all those faults that I just listed are from the point of view of today. There's always evolution in filmmaking. New techniques become fashionable. Old ones get left behind. And yeah, some of the attributes of this film definitely feel a bit retro. But I would say I do have two real gripes with this film. The first being the portrayal of the cops. They are narrow-minded, ignorant, dumbasses. Like, they're so poorly written. They can't see the evidence that's right in front of them that Kimball is innocent. They just, nope, he's guilty because he wants money. And when you also compare them to the other law enforcer of this movie, Tommy Lee Jones's Gerard, who's layered and nuanced and intelligent, they just come off as like cartoon cops. They're just dumb, dumb, dumb. That made me lose a few points for this film. And even though it does take 15 minutes for us to get to the point where the plot really takes off, where Kimball becomes the fugitive of the title, it does feel like we're rushing through a lot of the exposition of the plot points. So yeah, those two things are the only things that really bothered me about this film. So let's ask those three questions. Firstly, would I watch this again? Well, this was a rewatch, so obviously, but The Fugitive is actually a very rewatchable film because it's got great acting, lots of practical action set pieces which are jaw-dropping, as well as it's tightly edited, there's an intriguing atmosphere, and you've got Harrison Ford and Tommy Lee Jones at the top of the game, so yeah, it's very rewatchable. Question number two, am I gonna recommend it for you guys? Yes, for all those reasons that I just mentioned. And question number three, what score do I give it out of 10? A few minor quibbles, most of which just stem from the passage of time doing its thing. God, I shouldn't say thang. <laughs> yeah, time waits for no man or movie, apparently. But I'm gonna give The Fugitive a score of eight out of 10. But as always, this is just one bloke's opinion. I want to hear from you guys. Have you guys seen The Fugitive? What do you think of it? And my quick question for you guys today, what is your favorite old school action thriller movie. Whatever you guys think, sure let your voices be heard in the comment section down below. If you guys have enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to hit subscribe. And if you want to follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, it's all in the video description down below. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. For more things related to movies, TV, and popcorn culture, I'm Luke Airfield, and I'll see you next time.